We yep. are here with the slow talking Solange. Yes. Not ba- slow walking, just slow talking. Bad boy. Yes. Yeah, you know. I was just saying that I would like to have a YouTube uh, interview with my interviews and Mace's interviews to see who talks the slowest. Yeah, yeah. You know it. Bad boy. <laughs> Solange. Take that. So if this interview turns out to be a half an hour, it's really just us waiting for Solange. I know. Solange. It's the Houston girl in me. Well, and yeah. you, you know she's slow because look how flowy her outfit is today. Thank you. You look like a, you look like a polar bear. Thank you. Like very comfortable. That's the look. That's Seems the very vibe. relaxed. It well, is very. I relaxed. will say your whites are very white. And is this from the laundromat performance because you were there making sure your whites were white while you performed? No, or? this is dry cleaners. Ah, got this it, is dry got cleaners it. white. There's a difference. So the, Rosenberg gives me a hard time because I think it's hilarious that you performed in a laundromat because as yes. a single mom, you're multitasking. Yes. I thought it was very efficient use of time. Mm hmm. But not so much. No, it was actually um, Fader Vitamin Water Uncapped, mm. How to Make Boring Brilliant. And some That's of the. Brilliant. Yeah, right? That is, because I hate the fucking Shout laundromat. out to Fader for being uber creative yeah, and it conceptualizing is that. And then, like, Earl's sweatshirt performed in an auto body shop. So everyone, I think Schoolboy played last night. I'm not sure where. Like two nights ago, at like an art gallery or something. It wasn't something else. Mine was definitely like the weirdest. out there, yeah. Yeah, but the best at the same time. Like that's new. It was newsworthy. Like long. It was was also kind of awesome for people not to have the context and like be like. It's always great. Her ass is like, can't get stages. She in the laundry mat. It's really <laughs> cool. But you are getting some nice stages. You're opening up. You're at the at the Barclay Center? Yes. And who Friday are you opening up for? For Vampire Weekend. Now, explain to me who that is, because I don't know. <laughs> They're a really popular group. They're a pretty popular it's, uh, indie R&B band. Music, indie rock. Indie rock, but they actually have a lot of Afrobeat influences, um, but primarily indie rock, and I'm friends with the guys, and they're uber talented. I think Solange is sort of fascinating because you occupy a really, like, interesting space in music, and you have, like, a really, like, deep fascination with music. I do. I don't know. Like, you seem like a Brooklynite, but you're not originally at all. No. I mean, is that to say that people from the rest of the world can't be music enthusiasts? Yeah, that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's exactly what he's saying. No, it's to say it's more, if you're looking for some sort of um, low-key insult, it's more that you're a Brooklyn <laughs> hipster, more than anything else. Cool. You know, it's cool. more that. I'll wear that. Yeah. Um, no, I am, like, a super, super music fan. Um you know, since I was a little girl, I always just sort of sought out new artists. And um, I've gone through a lot of different musical phases. I went through my, like, you know, 90s feminist alt right rock Fiona. Elena Fab. Yes, okay. I had that. And then I went through, like, a heavy, heavy Nas obsession. Um, and junior high school, I actually got suspended from school over Nas. What, what's that story? Um, that story is <laughs> that I went to a Christian school. I had, um, I think it was a vibe cover of him with his godson tattoo on his stomach. I had like a whole homage to him in my locker. Obviously the Christian Dean thought that that was blasphemous to have a tattoo saying godson. And my argument was that there was a girl who had a Justin Timberlake poster in her locker with the cross on his chest so i didn't really see what the difference was Smart early so i refused to take it down and then i actually spoke with my parents and i told them and they actually gave me the freedom and the choice to stand by that and so um the dean told me if i didn't take it down by friday i think it was like a wednesday that i would get it in school suspension so so you took it down you caved no you let you let you took the suspension i took the suspension wow now yeah. have you ever told hove this story because this was probably during the time <laughs> when him and Nas was beefing this was before this oh, okay. was pre ether and that whole but era so you have never no, told I, your no he knew everyone knew that i was a fanatic i used to have Nas on my nails the whole thing Nas Nas knew I was a fanatic. I met him. I started bawling. I mean, you guys were I was then, like 13. And you guys were, oh, and then you guys became label mates. 
Yes. Briefly. Yes. And everyone at the label knew like, ah, oh, V's little sister is like obsessed with you. So, so let's be, let's be a hundred percent honest and just put it out there. Yes. In the life, in, in life, we all make decisions. Yes. Coke and Pepsi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pepsi. Neither for me. Neither. Whatever. Okay. Uh, that's ideal. That's good. Water, whatever maybe. Yeah. Jay-Z and Nas. The fact of the matter is you're a Nas girl. That's the fact. Things evolve. <laughs> And like I said, I went through a lot of musical Yo, phases. Yo, oh, Solange and likes Nas, so no, what's going to do? No, Yo, no, no. Yo, Thanksgiving dinner is going to be so crazy. By the way, Jay and I have our own sister-brotherly relationship. We talk about music a lot, about art a lot, so that's my dude. And no, so you're, I, and you're, and I'm sure, and, and that's and, my, and he would my enjoy brother. that argument too, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we've discussed it. I'm you know, I was actually like 13 or so when I met him and my first introduction to meeting him I sat next to him on the plane separately this was pre my sister and him dating and he saw that was in you know during the time when you had the big leather booklet with the oh, CD right, right, covers right, 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 and you right. took a lot of pride in laying that out and I had a whole Nas section of like album singles like everything you so. single covers also. I did wow. I did Interesting. and so his nickname for me was private school thug it still is today that's what he calls me and he made that up when he met you and yeah. there was no real relationship yeah yeah. Wow, yeah. Really cute. yeah what's your favorite Nas uh, <laughs> albums kind of well no I would say it's obvious but what's yours? I actually really like Stillmatic interesting yeah can I tell you something that drives me crazy about the Stillmatic intro What's that? This is sorry, bro. This is nerdy. And it's oh, this super is nerd random, hip-hop. but Solange Rosenberg right. nerd hip hop talk. Let's so, go. <laughs> I love the Stomatic intro. It's something yes. I play a lot, right? Uh huh. But he says, "Heart of a king." He says, "Heart of a king." King. No, he says, "Heart, heart of a god." He says, "Heart of a king, blood of a slave." Yes. And I'm like, "Oh yes, yes, yes." That's backwards. It's been a to while me. since I've heard it. To me, I've always thought that was backwards. Mm-hmm. It should be blood of a king, mm-hmm. meaning you're from the bloodline of kings and queens, heart of a slave. Nas is a poet, and I don't really question what, you know. How dare you question how he Nas expresses. in front of Solange Knowles. Just a nerd to but my, my favorite she is, is The Life, we, it's the life we Chose, which was on the album before that, which people really didn't love so much. But It's The Life We Chose is a really, really strong record. I was just listening to that the other day. I think still, I, 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 I enjoy your choices. Do you, yeah. I mean, still Maddox dope. Did you like, um, whatchamacallit, the double album? I don't know about the double album. Yes, you do. No, really, like. Hip Hop is Dead. Wasn't Hip Hop is Dead the, the. No, I think after eighth grade, like I said, I went through like all of my musical phases, and Still Maddox was really. That was your last Nas. Like my fanatic yeah, yeah, yeah. joint. While you were crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. So now all of this artistic talk and nerd rap talk leads yes. to where we are today with you musically, right? I mean, yeah. all of those influences kind of play into your newest video. Definitely, definitely. Um, when I wrote Lovers in the Parking Lot, I actually wrote it and Dev Hines produced it. And um, once we were done, I was... Like, you know, this is missing a couple of things. There's a certain bass line I had in mind that I like saying and had a bass player. And I was like, and we need Manny Fresh Drums. So um, I actually got Nerd the Manny. Pop. There's like a Manny kit, you know, like when you're the producing. Manny drum kit. Yeah. yeah. So I like tried a couple of different Manny drums. And when it came down to like conceive the video, I knew that I wanted to do it in Houston. Um, Houston had a huge parking lot pimp and sane, and I wanted to sort of pay homage to that, which the song references. And so I actually asked Manny to be in the video, and he said yes, which I was super psyched about. And um, I love Bun, he's amazing. And I actually saw him in a hotel lobby, and I asked him, would he do the video? And he was like, tell me more and I was like I have an idea (laughs) or I want to do this musical through King's Flea Market which King's Flea Market is sort of like your Houston swap meet the flea markets there have a very swap meet culture vibe and um, he used to work there he was like that's crazy I used to work at the tape shop there 
And I was like, sick. Yeah. When you get your screw tapes, nah, et cetera. Yeah. Look, yeah. On the West Coast, same thing with the shoes wrapped in plastic yes. and, you know, all of that. Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. very familiar with the swap meet. Yeah. But, you know, in New York, when you say flea market, people think of, like, Brooklyn vintage style, yeah. right, right, right. clothes. They think of people now, like, salon. <laughs> like, salon. Walking around, around buying walking around weird looking polar for old bear outfits and things like that. Yes, I suppose. <laughs> but... This is a whole different vibe. Right, right. And um, I, I told him that I wanted us to do a dance move together, like a Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis kind of move, and he was totally game. And uh, then I was like, well, can you talk to Manny about it too? And so he kind of rung him up, and, and so we're, we're dancing. So let me get this straight. Bun B, Manny Fresh, and Solange have choreography. We do. We Dance do. Steps. We do. A la Destiny's Child or a la Kid and Play. Kid and Play. Play. I would say more Scrappy, so. More so like the time. The time. Okay. Yeah. All right. We get like real funky all right all right and i have to say like manny can really really dance but you know back in the day he used to do the dougie before true it was did, the true dougie did, true he did so we like you know i mean look in hip-hop we used to dance a lot yes you know what i mean my running man is mean do you still bust it no, no. my knee i'm old ebro doesn't do any knee. dancing the only dance he does is in the studio he when you see him in real life no really listen, I, I just came but up you're from last, la i'm from oakland california but last they dance. week you know absolutely we dance mc hammer all that Rose, Oakdown, three, five, seven. he was do in Oakdown, three, five, five, seven. i came up missing last week dancing with a fat girl and then they didn't find me for at least 12 hours i'll show the pictures though they're all over the internet. I'm nice with it. You know what I mean? I wind up nice. Nice with the But there's big just girl. like a whole different men who dance culture in New York versus the South versus LA. And I'm kind of into like the guy standing there really firm. You know, yeah. like. Uh oh, like, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. That's, little, that's, what, my, <laughs> that's, that's what I did. And that's what hold I got on, caught doing with the and girl. And just letting the girl do all yes, of the work. Yes. Yes. I love Let's hear what, it for but, Solange. But no, I love what she's saying, but I got to show you this picture because it is precisely <laughs> what I was doing. Oh, shit. What do you think about that? How does that make you feel? That's definitely the stance that I'm talking but, about. But not that part on my notice, <laughs> notice, though. Pay attention to she's the placement it. of the pinky finger on the drink. You see that? <laughs> my skill is crazy. Old man style. Yes, the, see, it the is. It's a lot of shit I do wrong. Where is this? At some club. At Cotra Lounge. Cotra Lounge Thursday every night. Thursday night. Vibes up. Shiny culture. Who, who DJs? Um, a variety. <laughs> Bobby Connors and Job. Right? A lot of reggae music. D-Life. Oh, sick. Yeah, see, no. Yeah, see, we get see, let me be clear. The reason Ebro is able to stand so stiff, if you will, <laughs> is because when you're dancing with the chick that he was dancing with, you don't have to actually worry about becoming stiff so you can stand <laughs> like that and do not, not disrespect her i'm she not co-signing that I'm, I'm and just, she looks like she's having a good time what's like, your dance vibe no dance vibe i'm talking to dj you just bob yeah all i do is this but this means nothing you know you know 50 said i don't dance all i do is this no somebody else said that before they don't dance no more no, people don't dance no more all they, yeah. yeah all they do is this good point um Solange what, is just yeah, no. I'm just she saying like no no no. Oh, some hip hop shit though. I love she it. But no no no. no, no, no play, I'm just dance no more out. I would play the Fifty Cent record. And when but I, I don't the know the record, Fifty Cent one. What's that? It's on just a little bit or one of those songs. He goes, I don't dance. All I do is this. Oh yeah just yeah that yeah, little two yeah, step yeah yeah with a little twist, so yeah 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Fifty songs are so soft. By the way, I love those songs. I cannot. They're moist. They're moist. He finished Ja Rule off, and he has some of the best soft songs ever. But anyways. Yeah, that's why that's part of the reason I DJ is because I'm not a dancer. I like to be in the booth. Like I don't know right. what I'm doing unless I'm in the DJ booth. Yeah, and you weird. were you were mad at me for DJ. I did hate lots it. of people were. I got it. I got it. You know, it was just that it was unfair, and I wasn't really mad because I knew you were a sweetheart <laughs> at the time. But I was just kind of like, no. I mean, don't Joe lie to her now. She's Beyonce's sister yes. now. She just gets to be a DJ. Yes. No, Absolutely. I got it. I got it. But, you, but, but you I have to it. say, really like, it. I actually, I actually called. Tip, Q-Tip, who is my favorite DJ. He's amazing. He also was an add-on DJ later. I mean, he, oh, come on, though. I mean, listen, Tip's one of my buddies. Come at least on. He was a Wait a minute. First, a Wait a minute. Oh, he so when beats. you produce? Well, I've been producing a long time. See? So then do I get it? Oh, we a, didn't know this, though. We didn't know Solange Knowles was the producer honest, in the family. I, I got to ask Tip that. I don't know the first time Tip started spinning records. It's hard to say. Because, but who like, cares if you're good? 
That's he's a good just point. ill. Yeah, he's good, but he's amazing. He, he plays. He has a great selection. So. And the first time that I actually, like, I've always been just a music lover and played music at parties. The iPod Hog, that chick, super annoying. The iPod Hog. Yeah. Yes. And so um, it was actually right after the earthquakes in Haiti, and I wanted to help out and contribute in some okay, kind of way. Don't make me feel even worse now. No, no, no. I'm really serious. But so I that just was how like you thought I could, you could have an event. No, no, no. I had an event, and I was like, someone has to DJ. I asked Tip to do it. He wasn't available. I asked Amir. I asked. Questlove I asked all of my favorite DJs and everybody was sort of doing their own contributions and so I was like you know what I'm just gonna like play some music and actually my sister and Jay um it was my birthday and they brought me turntables they're like we're tired of you being an iPod DJ actually learn how to DJ I respect it I respect and it because I can't stand an iPod DJ I know well I mean I wasn't doing it like it was like at, a party she would just no like, like at like, house parties right, and right, stuff. Right, right. yeah yeah so, yeah so so I actually called Tip and I was like I know you can't DJ but will you just give me like a really basic level and nothing's basic with him so I went there no, that is true and he put impeach the president on two different sides and he literally for five hours made me go back and forth until I could beat match and it was like I wasn't gonna do it if I couldn't do it. actually beat match and do it so here's and where the hating part kicked in though yes then I know the access to music that you had was right. stupendous because you and you and Amir are very close yes so you could just be like yo Questo What's up with those five hard drives you have on you right now? <laughs> he actually did put some music on. Oh, for did me. he? Yeah, he I did. know that he, he did. did. But actually, um, there was Yo, another Rosenberg DJ in right Chicago. Now. I DJed and I was terrified because this was like, you know, I mostly did like art parties, fashion parties, but this was like a hardcore Chicago. I mean, the art fashion parties, but they don't even know what a blend is. <laughs> so you can just do whatever. You can just fade one out and play one. It didn't matter. Like, You're amazing. <laughs> now you had a club But it's actually. really, really about, but even at Brooklyn Bowl, like you have to come with it. And I did a good like six month residency there where I was DJing and that really 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 strengthened I always felt very good about my song selection because I tend to play the songs that were just the album cuts that people actually legitimately want to hear yes. but nobody ever really plays that's the, well that's one of the keys of being a great DJ yeah do, and, but the thing is it is totally different not to just give you to, to, to suck up to you but it is different being a mute being a DJ, half of being a DJ is being a music lover slash expert, like someone who yeah. loves it. So it is obviously vastly different when Solange Knowles to de decides to become a DJ versus, say, Paris Hilton, who just got a six-month residency. And I know you're um, a Knowles. You won't say anything mean about anyone. But <laughs> when I see that, That's I'm just like, true. really? Paris Hilton, a six-month residency? Solange will definitely say something <laughs> mean say. about somebody to their well, face. Well, then please diss Paris Hilton right now. So but can... I haven't seen, so I can't make an educated... Hard to believe she'd have good taste in music. I know I'm just judging, Paris. Maybe, but you, I, I get surprised a lot. And honestly, I keep it very humble on the DJ tip. I have so much to learn still. I am so open and always a, a student. I'll always be a student. Do you still you're still doing to it though? I am. Even though you've like been now really back on in the performance world, you're still into yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna do a gig actually in a couple of weeks. It's definitely slowed down, but I love doing it. Do you ever spin actual wax or always just serato? I have, but really to be quite honest, just to switch over. Just to, to set your shit up. Yeah. yeah exactly. But, she knows her shit, though. I can tell. She <laughs> respects look, the craft. No, I really respect the craft, and it really was just something that I enjoyed so thoroughly. But I would not have done if I didn't actually take the time out. And I still fuck up. You know what I mean? I still have so much to learn. Definitely can't scratch. Definitely can't cut. But the blend is there. That's all. So. And music choice. Music choice. <laughs> the, the song selection, blend. I yeah. feel if good If you have about. song selection, you can blend some records. Yeah. That's the start of being a DJ. Yeah. So do you feel like, it sounds like listening to you talk, and I've known you for some time, you found your path. Like, as far as being creative, your creative yeah, outlet, I mean, and I what Solange like stands for. I into it. Right. I didn't so forth find it. I feel like 
I was so blessed and so lucky to have um, the journey that I've had. I started off actually dancing for Destiny's Child when I was 13. I didn't know that. Yeah, I danced um, with them from 13 to 15. I was their backup dancer, and I traveled all over the world. And that was so imperative for my journey because in Europe especially, um, where we toured the majority of the time, I was dancing with them. Radio was so different. So I had exposure to, you know, Chemical Brothers being top 40 there in Bjork and, you know, all of these different musical cultures that I was exposed to. And me just being a little music nerd, like I just grasped onto it so much, but I didn't really know how to take all of these influences because, again, I'm just as influenced by Manny Fresh as I am that. And I didn't really know because, you know, you're young. And honestly, at that age, it was so important for me as most teenagers to, like, show how deep I was. So I, like, you know, used to wear Rasta braids and, like, all Jamaica, everything. My first video, everything is red, green, black. Noriega is, like, doing the verse. Like, you know, it takes time for you to really develop that confidence that you pretend to have. And I think, um, you know, the older my son got, the more settled and more stability I had, the more I was really able to sort of focus on me because I was a nomad basically from 13 until 17, which are the really imperative years of your life. You know, I didn't have that high school experience and then I went straight into getting married and having a kid I moved to Idaho to the middle of nowhere time out yes (laughs) let's stop on Idaho how did that happen what the hell my ex-husband he played college ball there that's right so he wanted to go to school there and I was the supportive wife and I also like kind of romanticized about the idea of raising jewels in the country so I was down for I'll a be while honest, it's, I'll be honest it's sort of a cute I understand where you were at yeah like I'll, you'll support him while he's there yeah raise jewels in the middle you guys of nowhere you get a ranch you know I have plenty yeah, of room to we play had, and a dog yeah did you guys have a dog we didn't have a dog but cause I was like 17 with a newborn I had no family there no friends so it was just were you guys high school us. sweethearts yeah yeah so we were together from 13 to 20 wow yeah. Are you guys still cool? We're cool. We co-parent. You co-parent. We're not homies. Like you're not best buds. Yeah. But and how's your like? I I've obviously met your son yeah. just uh, running through yes. everyone's dressing room backstage yes. at concerts, doing whatever yes. he wants at any time. And yes. Everyone when he's like, with when the, when he's with the family, he's like you know the jewel. They let him do whatever he wants, but. I am not at all that kind of mom. I'm like, especially by Brooklyn mom standards, I'm like Cruella DeVille. What do you mean? Because in Brooklyn, like everybody's like super like, liberal and like, like they can express themselves and do whatever they want. And I'm like, you better shut up talking crazy to me. Yeah, in Brooklyn, <laughs> in Brooklyn, it's like they're eating like weird gluten free granola bars and they're barefoot. We and do a little everywhere. of that, but we're. So such a living contradiction we have like the seaweed snacks and then we have like spicy cheetos too so <laughs> you try you try. try okay by the way we have seaweed this snacks is, and we have funyuns this is totally something i had no interest in bringing up until yes. it just popped in my head when you mentioned your high school sweetheart yes because i'm the last person to care about gossip okay but i'm sorry this did make me laugh out loud did you happen to see your sister's ex-boyfriend on e this week no. I forgot to mention this to you. What? No. Either Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood. It was on and by accident around That's dinner time. That's interesting. And they were like an exclusive with the man. It was who a lost video Beyonce. interview. Yes. Uh-huh. Apparently, Wait, a boyfriend who is this she had person? in high school for a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, a few years. And like I a know real who you're boyfriend. talking about. But it's it a was, sweet guy. No, he's and he did. He wasn't a jerk at all. Yeah, he was totally nice. The only funny part that I thought thought was amusing was that he was like, but then he messed up and cheated on Beyonce, and he's like, yeah, I blew it, you know. <laughs> I'm like, of course you had to frame it like that. Like she left, like you Damn. made her leave. He was like, but he was generally very nice. I just thought it was hilarious that he got an exclusive. Yeah, like they were amped. Damn, but I have to check that out. That but that speaks to like the level of. 
weirdness fame that your sister's Yes. In, which I find to be one of the more fascinating things about you is that you are, A, you're famous in your own right. Yeah. But you're also mad regular. Yeah, I guess so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when I bumped into a Bonner who I hadn't yeah. seen in a long time. Yeah. And it's sort of like bumping into a regular person that I know who's in the music world with me, but I don't think like, oh, her sister's the most famous human being on earth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I have to say like, my sister's mad regular too. I mean, so obviously here. to a certain extent, you know, life can't allow her to do that, but... Yeah, like she can't just walk to the edge of the stage and put her arm out with someone not trying to I know. snatch her I know. and drag it's her really into scary. the audience. It's just really, yo, it's get, really yo, scary. Seriously, there needs to be an intervention there. Seriously, no, somebody needs I to mean, go, yo, chill. These I know. Are crazy. I know. Well, I mean, she has the whole beehive stage. Oh, that's who those people are. Yeah, so those are like select fans that have followed that her. Crazy. <laughs> that's the extra crazy section. <laughs> oh. That's what it's there for. That's what the beehive is. But I love sitting at the beehive because I just like wave as if I'm a fan and she just can't even deal. And I just try to distract her and be like, and she's just like, I can't look at See, you See, right things now. are going to get real. I'm telling you, they're going to get real and then someone's going to get their ass whooped. That's what's really going to happen. They need I to know. chill. I know. Somebody it's needs, really scary. But you know what? At the same time, I have to give her the hugest props for yes. putting herself and being that okay. accessible. Fair enough. But it is scary. And where was Especially it, as a family member. It's scary to watch that. Yeah, Brazil. Yeah. And dude wouldn't let go. No. But security was there, right? I mean, they, I assume no, they she let them go. Security yeah. was there, and she said it's okay. And didn't kick the guy out. No. What about the guy that slapped on the ass, though? That's taking it too far. He would have got slapped back. So if you're in the beehive section, yes. and something like that happens, yes. what is Solange going to do? If I'm in there and I see that happen? <laughs> yes. That is tough. I mean, I honestly, I honestly have really, really been trying to work on myself and mature <laughs> in that area because it's not cute. Wait, and, wait, like, wait. You are you saying, is that implying that if you didn't work on it, like, you were Miss <laughs> slap a bitch? Is that what you're saying? Like, without no. work? No. So, you yoked? You're a yoker? You're, tell the truth because I've seen it. Tell the <laughs> truth. Have you seen her yoke? I've no, I, not she put her hands on pointing at you but and nodding. I will, yeah, you know what time it is. She'll get into motherfucker zone. Don't motherfucking this motherfucker that. Do not. I yes. just. She can't I've do that. I've had to defend myself You're a the lot. Sister, of yeah, course. and I'm like super protective of my sister. That's like my sensitive subject. I've been known to like snap off a little bit like behind if her. Are, if people are saying comments and yeah, things like that. I'm not into that. But who is? Yeah. You I mean, know, at the yeah, same weird. at the same time, like you have a human reaction that's like, you know, it's like talking about your mama. See, you just it, don't and, do that. And it's actually good that you finally came because I know you're here because you probably checked in with Kelly Rowland first. Who no, used to I, think that Rosenberg was an evil spirit. Remember no, that? I actually just am scared of radio in general. <laughs> Why? It, it's scary. There are a lot of assholes in our business. Okay. This station's history with their family has not been uh, yeah, amazing true, true, thanks true, to true, your true. past employees. But true. I saw him at Bonner and I said, you know, I really, really want to come up to the station. And I'm a, obviously, who isn't a huge fan of Hot 97. And he was like, we're not that scary. Yeah, it's not that. Deep. And, I mean, and then cracked, I like, and then instance, I had to like actually go online and, and I saw like a few interviews. I was Did like, I can see handle the that. One where he inducted your sister into the axis of evil. <laughs> no, <laughs> but which, didn't we which, just discuss how I am? No, I so why she would have laughed, laughed because okay. it was with Scar from The Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Darth Vader and you have to give it the context though. So yeah, because so I'm like that's not when funny. The whole, like lip sync. <laughs> no, when the whole like lip sync that the mm -hmm. inaugural thing came out and everyone was like so up in arms, like she had <laughs> right. committed this evil thing. Rosenberg oh, was like, okay, yes. okay, okay. all right, all right, all right. With, with fictional characters. With, no, but, but well, the, I'm into that because well, people record, are wilding. Right, people, it was ridiculous. Yeah, well, people still got mad at me. There are people who still hit me. And were like, how dare you? I'm like. <laughs> It's a scar not real. A scar from Lion King isn't real. I thought yeah. I'd make it obvious that way. But I, just, but I, I don't know. I'm not sensitive change, so about humor. Like, she was like, 
like, where are you guys taking me on camera right now? No, I don't think I, the, I, I don't give Beyonce a hard time about that much. I, I had my doubts about the uh, the movie, but then I watched the movie and it was actually pretty interesting. What movie? The Beyonce movie. Oh, on HBO. The Beyonce biography by Beyonce, directed by Beyonce. Yeah, we we do our own. It was pretty good though. <laughs> it was pretty. I, it I was didn't watch the whole thing. It got a little too girly for me in it the does, second hour. It does get girly. It's it, the second hour. This, the first hour was dope. I was watching it. It's a lot of it, feelings what? in it. There are a lot of feelings. Oh, okay. It's a lot of feelings. Listen, All right. I, I, there was a football game on or something. I switched to the football game. No, I game. get that. And you don't want to see get that. her talking about your friend and being like, Jay-Z, that is, and being like, you beautiful man That's of so perfection. That's so sweet. It's I amazing. Know, we're men. No, I'm, their relationship is amazing. But then I'm like... I, don't be salty. <laughs> don't be salty. I, no, it's a little hate. It's a little hate because their relationship is amazing. And, and I hope no to be. No, you have and no I have nothing. No, you have nothing. And they have everything. They have everything. everything. And most importantly, they have each other, and you have yeah. zero. Zero. <laughs> the world's smallest violin. Listen, yes. Solange Knowles will be live at the Barclay Center, which is amazing, with a group yes. I've never heard of, which sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> They're huge, by the way. Vampire Weekend is hugely popular. And I'm an idiot they for are. not knowing what they, they are. You would like this, though. I would, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. They're pretty cool. Yeah. And let me say, when I saw Solange at Bonnaroo, she rocked the oh, hip hop thank jam. You. Oh, thank she you. Did. I was so nervous. Well, tell them who you tell everyone who you played with that night. I played with Ghostface. I did Tough. Cher Shayla Ghost. Tough. She sung Cher Shayla Ghost. Tough. I did. And it was my request because Bonnaroo sort of curated this whole hip hop jam and they were like, We need a singer. Well, you do it, and I'm like, of course, but some of the song selections were like a little bit more in your face, right, right, mash right, right, up your vibe, right. and I was like, at rehearsal, can we do Shashayla Ghost? And everyone was kind of like, hmm. And that shit rocked, though. And I just started singing it just to sort of egg them on. And they were like, this But works. the crazy thing is, is like they didn't actually egg Ghost. <laughs> Oh, they just did it. And he was, of course, No, just... no, no, no. I went into the dressing room, and I looked like a little 10-year-old girl, like, will you please play your Shayla Ghost with me? And he was like, yeah, cool. And, and he was, was like, like nah, man. And you were like, oh, okay. It was like, it's like, you know what I mean? But like, he's right, so, so chill. He's so chill. But and where had, did that blog come from? Because it's Big not Ghost chill. Face? No, it's fake. It's, it's fake. Amazing. I know. It's but amazing. I know. But I, wanna, I, I love it too, but I it's so condescending it to his vibe. Yes. No, no. It does. It does not. I told him a week when he had him here last time. I told him about it. He didn't know about he it. He didn't really know about Stop it. Stop it. I, I said, by to the him, way, my boyfriend talks to me in the voice of that See, that's the thing. person. No, I just opened my Instagram, but the very last thing that I posted. Posted, which my friends all saw was I asked him uh, he asked me if he could murk one of my brownies that I left <laughs> <laughs> and you know how you talk out loud yeah. and you're texting at the same time and I was like murk it girl because I was saying girl to someone and then he was like yo the god don't play that don't he, yeah, <laughs> like what's he your, constantly what's your talks it's saint records saint Yes. What is Saint Records? You know, like it's fun. my label. I just launched. I didn't have Hold on. never yeah. heard of this. So you're, you're, so you're, he's, you, let me guess. No, I deleted it oh, because why? I didn't want like fans like all uh, in my yeah, so tea yeah. like that. So he's he's into Ghostface, the artist, and no, no, Ghostface, he the is, but Both. he talks to me very oftenly in the voice of the Did blog. You say oftenly? Is that not a word? I don't think so. Shit. Um, do, it's cool though. I Most like often, no, it he talks it to me. Do you? I want to find someone. Who can simply voice that ghost face persona? Yeah, he can't vocalize it, like, but he just texts it. I mean, the blog itself <laughs> is hilarious. Imagine it is, but it's, it's slowed down a lot. It's sometimes not it's really down on a lot. There. It's down a lot, I think, because of content, but sometimes it gets a little mean, but sometimes it is it has me crying. Me too. But it's it's good. It's good stuff. And, uh, and don't forget, two, two other things to add to that. She did kill me softly that night also, which was awesome. I did. did. I could have done that a little tighter. I, I enjoyed it. was it. a little rough. I enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> also, You God came out and did his verse. Like, they did complete shit. Yeah, verse. yeah. And wow. don't forget, lest us not forget, that your sister's song with Ghostface is, like, one of my favorite. The Beyonce Summertime remix joint. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yes, that I forgot like about York that. Thing. It was a New York. It was a New York thing. But New York does that, especially hot nine seven. Yeah, well, because she put out the record <laughs> "Summertime," which I don't even know what was what was that on. It was, it was on a Fighting Temptation soundtrack. Good sister, no yes. music fan and a good sister. <laughs> Amazing. And then uh, Ghost, I'm like the biggest fan, just of her stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I Ghost like heard it on the radio and just made a version. But they put it out. Yeah. It's on. So then it came out. Oh, I have it on a Red Columbia record. It came out. Wow. Never knew that. Yeah. I also did Umi Says. Oh, and she did Umi Says. And That's I right. did I Want Black People to Be Free and full of a crowd full of maybe three black people. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, is so white. Oh, is so white. But you did that on purpose. No, I mean, that was part of the songs that... No, you got up there on some righteous black shit and was like... Oh, I mean, I, I'm always pretty righteous black shit. But that was a part of the... They gave nah, me like 20 songs to choose from. Look, and that's a classic. I'm all for rebellion. I'm for everything that, that you want to do. That was not rebellion. That I was a classic to, listen, record. Soon Who come, didn't like Umi Says? No, that's right. Umi Says. Yeah. Soon come when Solange Knowles is on the edge of that stage with her fist raised. Oh, I raised my fist that night. You did? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Dude, she was going hard. You can't say I want black people to be free and not put your fist this. up. Yeah. All right, good deal. Good yeah. deal. I'm all for it. Yeah. And I want to see you live. I have never seen you live. You should before. come. I'm never, and I'm would needing you, to see this would group. Would you come Vampire to Barclays? Whenever. I'm a little scared. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. It's a big stage. I mean, I've been playing just, a bunch of you, festivals, which have like Glastonbury yeah, had like eighty thousand people, but when it's outside. It feels very different. The stadium feels really official. Like, oh, it's official. Me, me, me. <laughs> that was Glastonbury. That's a big it was deal. Amazing. Somehow the crowd just started doing choreography while I was doing one of my songs. Like a whole sea of like twenty thousand people started doing this dance move, and I'm watching it like live from stage it was so magical were you doing the move also no they just did it on their own yes it See, was really strange that's why white people amazing. out of this country are different than white people in this country because if white people in this country tried to do a move choreograph like that there would be like all these separated shoulders and like that's not true injuries. that's not true i have a part in my show that i encourage everybody to do a dance and it doesn't matter what race it is people jam oh i'm not saying they don't try to how's it look <laughs> it looks good she lives in Brooklyn. She's around awkward white people all the time. Oh she, that's, she's just used to it. Oh Ladies and gentlemen, God. I think we got to let her go. She's got to run to BET. Are you premiering the video today? I'm premiering the video today. Sweet. Right. Yep. This is, this once again, choreography with Bun B and Manny Fresh. Yes. A must see. Yes. Right? Um, is there an album sick. out? Which, talk yes. to us about my the EP True came out last year. I'm working on my full length now. And I actually just launched my record label. Um a couple of months ago and I'm putting out my first project in November. How's mom? Mom is awesome. Okay, she's letting Proud you do your grandma. thing. Yeah, she's amazing. Taking care she's just on she's on blue mode, right? She's in full She's on blue mode, but she's she's committed to my blue. Okay. To Jules. They have like this. Oh, yeah, they look like twins. Like, she's living with like two grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. So she like comes I actually moved to New Orleans part time. And she just left from there. She was there with us for a week there. Oh, so, so your boyfriend lives from New Orleans, huh? No, he's not. So why would you move to New Orleans? For because anyone? I love New Orleans. Just, the, just the vibes, awesome. Yeah, the vibe is awesome. Do you get one of those dope houses? I haven't really found my house situation there are some yet. Houses that are there are. The, you know that big street when you're driving into New Orleans, where it's like the huge houses on both sides. Amazing. Of the street? Amazing. Yeah, that's in the uh, Garden District, yes. I think. Yeah. And the houses are just gorgeous. Yeah, it's dreamy. It's I love dreamy. just the like juxtaposition of culture there like it's just nowhere in the, the united French, states the Indian, that the black, the yeah history, it's everything. insane Music, like i food. literally the other night um when i was recording and i went out on the street and um it was like three in the morning and there was this guy i asked him how old he was he was like 82 or 83 on his blues guitar his little amp with his little reverb and he was doing drake I'm gonna find your loving. 82 years old, Amazing. but a blues version. Like, where oh. else are you just gonna see that on the street that's every day? Tight. No, it's like all day, every day. But that's your your people are from down there. Y'all Creole or something, right? Yeah. So y'all Houston, New Orleans. Yeah, we have family Alabama, in Louisiana. Like thing, right? Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, right. so it's sort of like homecoming. This was but... a phenomenal interview, and yes, I did not expect it to go this far. Thank Why? you, Why? guys. I just didn't know she was going to give us all of this. Like, you know what <laughs> I mean? All of that. All of that. She got up and danced. She did give us a little dance. I just did she what guys should that do. She on the wall yes. and women that wind up against them so yes. they don't have to do nothing. She yes. Doesn't. You know, but also Jill Scott was here yesterday, so like there's just a good Aww, soul energy. I love right her. Yeah. No, me too. She Jill is Scott's so amazing. vibrant too. Like her smile, her energy, everything. She's gorgeous. She's I amazing. Love her. Yeah. She's amazing. Y'all are getting real soulful up here. High five, Solange Thank knows. you so much. Kill them out there. And they actually gave me the freedom and the choice to stand by that. And so um, the dean told me if I didn't take it down by Friday, I think it was like a Wednesday, that I would get it in school suspension. So, so you took it down? You caved? No. You let, you let it rock? took the suspension? I took the suspension. Wow. Now, yeah. have you ever told Hove this story? Because this was probably during the time <laughs> when him and Nas was beefing. This was before. This oh, okay. was pre Ether and that whole but era. So you have never no, told I, your no. He knew. Everyone knew that I was a fanatic. I used to have Nas on my nails. The whole thing. Nas knew I was a fanatic. I met him. I started bawling. I mean, you guys I were was then, like and you guys were, Oh, and then you guys became label mates. Yes. Briefly. Yes, and everyone at the label knew. Like, oh, B's little sister is like obsessed with you. So, so okay. let's be let's be a hundred percent honest and just put it out there. Yes. In the life, in, in life, we all make decisions. Yes. Coke and Pepsi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pepsi. Neither for me. Neither. Whatever. Okay. Uh, that's ideal. That's good. Water. Whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Jay Z and Nas. The fact of the matter is, you're a Nas girl. That's the fact. Things evolve. <laughs> And like I said, I went through a lot of musical Yo, phases. Yo, oh, Solange She's, likes and, Nas, so no, what you gonna do? No, Yo, no, Thanksgiving no. dinner's by gonna the be way, so crazy. By the way, Jay and I have our own sister-brotherly relationship. We talk about music a lot, about art a lot, so that's my dude. And no, so you're, I, and you're, and I'm sure, and, and, and that's my, and he would my enjoy brother. that argument too, I'm Yeah, sure. we, we've discussed it. I'm you know, I was actually like 13 or so when I met him and my first introduction to meeting him I sat next to him on the plane separately this was pre my sister and him dating and he saw that was in you know during the time when you had the big leather booklet with the oh, CD right, right, covers right, 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 and you right. took a lot of pride in laying that out and I had a whole non section of like album singles like everything you so. single covers also. I did wow. I did and so his nickname for me was private school thug it still is today that's what he calls me and he made that up when he met you and yeah. there was no real relationship yeah yeah. Well, yeah. Really cute. yeah what's your favorite Nas uh, <laughs> album's kind of well no I would say it's obvious but what's yours? I actually really like Stillmatic interesting yeah can I tell you something that drives me crazy about the Stillmatic intro What's that? This is sorry, bro. This is nerdy. And oh, it's this super is nerd random, but Solange Rosenberg right. nerd hip hop talk. Let's so, go. <laughs> I love the Stillmatic intro. It's something yes. I play a lot, right? Uh huh. But in an auto body shop. So everyone, I think Schoolboy played last night. I'm not sure where. Like but two everyone, nights ago, at like an art gallery or something. It wasn't something else. Mine as, was definitely like the weirdest. Out there. Yeah. Yeah, but the best at the same time. Like that's. New, it was newsworthy. Like long, it, well, it was also kind of awesome for people not to have the context and like be like, "It's always great." Her ass is like can't get stages. She in the laundry mat. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But you are getting some nice stages. You're opening up. You're at the at the Barclay Center. Yes. And who Friday are you opening up for? For Vampire Weekend. Now explain to me who that is because I don't know. <laughs> They're a really popular group. They're a pretty popular uh, indie R&B band. Music, indie rock. Indie rock, but they actually have a lot of Afrobeat influences, um, but primarily indie rock, and I'm friends with the guys, and they're uber talented. I think Solange is sort of fascinating because you occupy a really, like, interesting space in music, and you have, like, a really, like, deep fascination with music. I do. I don't know. Like, you seem like a Brooklynite, but you're not originally at all. No. I mean, is that to say that people from the rest of the world can't be music enthusiasts? Yeah, that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's exactly what he's saying. No, it's to say it's more if you're looking for some sort of... Um, we yep. are here with the slow talking salon. Yes. Not bad, slow walking, just slow talking. Bad boy. Yes. Yeah, you know. I was just saying that I would like to have a YouTube... Uh, 
interview with my interviews and Mace's interviews to see who talks the slowest. Yeah, yeah. You know it. Bad boy. <laughs> Solange. Take that. So if this interview turns out to be a half an hour, it's really just us waiting for Solange. I know. It's the Houston girl in me. Well, exactly. And you, you know she's slow because look how flowy her outfit is today. Thank you. You look like a, you look like a polar bear. Thank you. Like very comfortable. That's the look. That's Seems the very vibe. relaxed. It well, is very. I relaxed. will say your whites are very white. And is this from the laundromat performance? Because you were there making sure your whites were white while you performed. No, or? this is dry cleaners. Ah, got this it, is dry got cleaners it. white. There's a difference. So the, Rosenberg gives me a hard time because I think it's hilarious that you performed in a laundromat. Because as yes. a single mom, you're multitasking. Yes. I thought it was very efficient use of time. Mm-hmm. But not so much. No, it was actually um, Fader Vitamin Water Uncapped, mm. How to Make Boring Brilliant. And some That's of the. Brilliant. Yeah, right? That is, because I hate the fucking Shout laundromat. out to Fader for being uber creative yeah, and it conceptualizing is. that. And then, like, Earl's sweatshirt performed. At- Low key insult. It's more that you're a Brooklyn <laughs> hipster, more than anything else. Cool. You know, it's cool. More I'll wear that. Yeah. Um, no, I am like a super, super music fan. Um, you know, since I was a little girl, I always just sort of sought out new artists. And um, I've gone through a lot of different musical phases. I went through my, like, you know, 90s feminist alt right rock Fiona. Your little affair vibe. moment? Yes, okay. I had that. And then I went through, like, a heavy, heavy Nas obsession. Um, and junior high school, I actually got suspended from school over Nas. What, what's that story? Um, that story is <laughs> that I went to a Christian school. I had, um, I think it was a vibe cover of him with his godson tattoo on his stomach. I had like a whole homage to him in my locker. Obviously, the Christian dean thought that that was blasphemous to have a tattoo saying godson. And my argument was that there was a girl who had a Justin Timberlake poster in her locker with the cross on his chest so i didn't really see what the difference was Smart early so i refused to take it down and then i actually spoke with my parents and i told them 